Hello there, everyone. I apologize for being a couple minutes late. I was actually playing a little bit and lost track of time. And then, you know, trying to clean up enough so that I could make this work. So good evening, everyone. I'm going to find myself on my iPad. And then we should be ready to go. Where am I? There it is. There we go. I can see your comments. Looks like I'm maybe a little bit crooked. Oh, turn down my volume so we don't get any feedback. Yes, I apologize. I am a few minutes late. But better late than never, right? So tonight and starting off uh, for this month, this month we are all about getting out of our comfort zone. And we are going to, each one of us is going to be showing something that um, maybe we didn't think we would like and then we tried it and sure enough we did like it. Um, maybe it's really out, just out of our comfort zone, out of our wheelhouses and just showing you that, you know, it's, sometimes it's fun to, it is fun to get outside that comfort zone and try something new. And it, definitely that is one of those things that um, our trade shows have been very beneficial for, for myself especially and for our team is that uh, we get to try new things. And I do apologize, it looks like I am way crooked, but you know, we're just gonna wing it because tonight is really free form and flexible because tonight for me, getting out of my comfort zone is about getting messy. Now, Matt will laugh. I know he's watching in the other room. He will laugh because if you had a look at my office, messy is my middle name. I ha I'm still working on my my uh, reorganization. I'm still working on sorting stuff and purging stuff. But when it comes to my crafting, I tend to be much more of a clean and simple kind of person. And I'm just finding room for all my stuff over here on the side as I'm talking. So uh, where Chris and Marcy especially, and to some degree Darlene, um, can do a lot better with the mixed media, with the wet stuff, I'm going to say. I like dry stuff. I like um, clean lines. I like nice and simple and um, very orderly. So when I start playing with things like paint, then this is definitely me outside my comfort zone. But I will tell you, I've been playing with this stuff for a little while now, and I've made some really fun cards. Of course, I don't have them handy, um, but we're gonna make some cards tonight. We're gonna play with some stuff. I'm gonna try some different things. And I actually also found an idea on Pinterest that I have not tried. So we are doing a blind trial here. Uh, I'm gonna give that a shot as well. So come along with me for the ride. Uh, now that you've heard my preamble, and like I said, I mean, I don't like getting my hands dirty, so I have just a wet face cloth that I've got here, an old one that I've got right here by my side to be washing my hands. Otherwise, I'd go to, through way too many uh, baby wipes. I have a little tray off to the side. It's a little bit too far for me to grab right now, but it's got it's uh, just an aluminum tray that has some water in it that I can throw... Uh, my stencil in once we're done using it and some of the other things that we um, we might play with so that way it stays wet and moist until I have a chance to clean it. So tonight, like I said, I am playing with the Sizzix Creamy Acrylic paint, uh, paint and it really is quite smooth and creamy. It is very nice even on dark paper and keep your opacity. I find it's very easy to clean up. 
And personally, uh, the colors, at least the ones that, that I've collected, really speak to me. So this is Mango Tango. We have Hibiscus. Uh, this one is Agave, which we don't have in stock right now, but we are in the process of restocking. And I've got some other colors as well. Now let me just find a little scrappy piece. This is, is a little scrappy piece of paper. So to, to play with and to practice with, um, I've just been using some Nina cardstock, some 80 pound, just cause I've got little bits and pieces floating around. Uh, some of the other things I've been playing with, I do prefer the Distress Heavy Stock. Whoops, I just put my finger in something wet here. Um, I prefer the, the Heavy Stock just because it does give a little bit more oomph. It's a little bit thicker and it does stand up to the, uh, to the medium and be able to hold it and not get too warpy. Uh, so <clears throat> Distress Heavy Stock. Just looks like this, and I know Jen Shirkus uses it a lot for her ink blending and whatnot. So it's nice because it will accept a little bit of water as well. Uh, you get 10 sheets in a pack, and I do, this is one of those papers where I do hoard my scraps uh, quite a bit as well. Because I'm always using it. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, so what I was going to do is here is just my scrappy piece. I'm going to squeeze out just a little bit here and a lot for a lot of what I'm going to show you tonight a little goes a long way so here it is really nice and creamy look I'm getting I'm finger painting um it's really nice and smooth and creamy you don't get lumps and it covers really nicely and you can make it as thick or thin as you want um, just keeping in mind that the thicker you have it, the longer it's going to take to dry. And I'm going to show you some samples that I'm just playing with. Oh, I just got some on my good paper there. Um, just some different samples. So the longer, the thicker you have it, the longer it is going to take to dry. So you just have to be aware of that. I do have my Ranger heat tool. Oh, and now it's got a fingerprint on it here on the side so that I can speed things along a little bit. Yeah, I don't like getting messy. All right, so that is that creamy acrylic. And there is, I think, if I remember correctly, there's 16 colors, um, most of which are these, you know, nice colors. Now, if you want to learn more about mixing colors and creating your own colors, um, then think about joining uh, Chris's art journal class uh, for the next quarter. She's going to be playing more with distress paints, but um, she's going to be talking about mixing colors and how you want to um, create different shades and all of that kind of stuff. For me, because I don't do um, because I don't do a lot of this, I like the pre-mixed colors, but if you're really getting into a lot of mixed media, learning that color theory is awesome. Uh, Janice is asking, was one of these included in Maker Mania? I, if I remember correctly, it was the Agave, and yeah, mine's leaking a little bit, uh, the Agave and the Lemoncello that were included in Maker Mania, maybe Maker Mania 4. Um, but they're lots of fun to play with. And so if you have, were in Maker Mania and you haven't cracked these open yet, then definitely get them out and start playing with them. So there's quite a range of colors. There is also a black, there is also a white, and you know, just hint, hint, there might be a class coming in the fall using the black and white, hint, hint, be on the lookout for that. And then there are three metallics. Now we are out of stock on the gold, but we have the uh, rose gold and the silver as well. So you never know what I'm gonna get into tonight. Maybe we'll crack those open too. All right, and I see lots more people joining in. Hello everyone as you join us tonight. So I'm gonna keep it simple because again, this is way outside of my comfort zone. Um, I was playing, that was just playing with my finger and that uh, mango tango. I was also playing with um, a couple of different shades. And what I did is I was playing with my texture tool. And this is fun because it's got that nice flat edge, but it's got some textured edges as well. And that's kind of the thing that you'll 
get with this. And then I did some mixing, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So to make some really quick and easy cards uh, using this acrylic paint, um, actually maybe I'll take this one and cut it down and let's do some demos first and then we'll make our cards. So I'm gonna just trim these down a little bit as well. Yes, the textured look is fun. And I really just created it very simply in that. Now let's, let's pick some different colors. I'm gonna do hibiscus and maybe the lemon cello. And let's bring a mango tango just cause those are, those are nice bright summery colors. Uh, Jennifer saying she didn't get a chance to visit our store. Well, Jennifer, you're going to have to just put that on your list for next time. No worries at all. So all I'm going to do is squeeze out. Oh, see that one still even has the seal on it. So let me peel that off. And I'm using my Sizzix Mixed Media Mat. I just like the silicone surface with no frames. So I'm just going to squeeze out a little burp there. Squeeze out the Lemoncello beside it and my hibiscus and if i wanted to oh that one's sealed too i thought i played with that one already maybe i had so let's squeeze out that and i'm going to go through and repeat those colors burp and you guys know me i am the queen of sound effects whoops and you can see that just a very little bit goes a long way. And what I'm gonna do, I've got these little bumps here and you know what, I probably could have even started it off on the mat, but I'm just gonna take the flat edge here and just drag. Look at that, look how fun that is. And yeah, this is a really thin layer, so it doesn't show a whole lot, but I can go on to another one because I still have lots left here and do a second layer like that. And maybe now I'm gonna flip it around carefully with my texture tool and get that kind of ridged side to it. And look, if I'm careful, look, I've got it all over my hands. Oh, this is outside my comfort zone. All right. So now I can go back into this last piece here and just use up all the last little bits of that. So now I've got three different pieces already and you saw how very little paint uh, that I used on that. So that's nice and fun. You can see some different thicknesses there. Uh, let me grab paper towel. and clean that off clean it with the dry first and then with the wet just to get all that color off in case i switch colors so i'm going to set that aside to dry a little bit and we'll play a little bit more and then maybe these are the ones i will come back and make a card with as well but just really fun with the backgrounds all right drying space drying space Okay, so other things you can do with this. You can use it with a stencil. So I've got um, this beautiful hero art. It's called Daisy Mosaic. <clears throat> I'm going to crack that open. And this stuff also works on black paper. So let me cut down some black and let's see what this, this stuff does. There we go, two pieces of black. And my stencil. 
So let's just position it. And I'm, I'm really going, <coughs> excuse me, Maverick here. <coughs> excuse me. I don't know where I put my water down. I'm not even going to tape this. I'm just going to go for it. I am going to this time play. I really like that combination of the Mango Tango and the Lavender or Lavender Dust, I guess is the official name. And you guys, you know me, I like my bright colors. So let's, let's maybe do some hibiscus as well. This time I'm going to, um, yeah, this time I'm going to switch to, you know what, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna switch to a paintbrush. I'm gonna gently hold this down here and just paint into different areas. So there's some mango tango up there, maybe some down here. And let's go over here. And because these are all going to eventually mix together and blend anyways, I'm not even, oh, Matthew, thank you so much. Matthew brought me my water. And then he looked at the desk and like, uh, where am I gonna put that? Okay, now I'm just gonna go right into the hibiscus. Just kind of spread it around. You could use a spatula, you could use that texture tool. I'm just trying this out to see how this works. And that's the best part of playing is that you can really just have some fun. All right, let's do the purple now. Here we go. Looks like I need a little bit more. And I really, I am definitely a believer in, you know, try a little bit first and then if you need more, you can add more. It's kind of like a haircut. You don't want to take off too much. You can always take more off later. All right. Um, I think I need a little bit more hibiscus. Uh, where'd it go? Here it is. You can see just how soft and easy this is to play with. If you guys have any questions at all as I'm going along, don't hesitate to ask. I am kind of making this up as I go along, but happy to give my two cents worth. And then I'm just going to peel this up. Wowzers! And I wonder, okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way. I'm gonna bring my other piece in. Trying to move quickly here and not succeeding. So let's quickly wipe this down and I'm just making more of a mess. So if I put this down, if I lightly spritz that with water just to reactivate it if we need to, and then I'm now going face down onto my black, let's take this texture tool. All right, let's see what happened. Well, it's kind of fun too. It looks like I missed a couple of spots, but uh, that gives almost more of a rustic, rustic's not the right, but more of a batik kind of look. I love how it's got that texture to it from the water. But now I'm just going to take my stencil and put it in my water tray so that it can stay wet until I'm ready to clean it. All right, so that's through the stencil. Could you take the stencil and smooch it down on the black? Is that what I just did, Janice? Just gives you a different look, a different effect. And because we didn't use a ton of paint, 
It should dry pretty quickly. But because it's not that heavy stock, this is just regular black cardstock, then it is going to take a little time to dry. And I'm running out of space. All right, so those are behind me. Let's just do a little clean up here. That one's probably too dirty. Water is a friend when you're cleaning up. I'll give this a really good clean afterwards, but for now that just gets that surface area clean. I like the little wells that I've got here to kind of keep everything sorted. Uh, what else did I want to show you tonight? So yeah, you could play with the texture tool. You can play with the brushes. Um, coming back to this guy here, this little side looks a little bit thick, so I'm just going to clean them up. Oh, I know what I wanted to show you. So because, because there is a little bit of a drawing time to this, there's, a, you can, you can add stuff to it, like maybe some glitter. So let me, let's do this. And I'm going to grab one other thing. So I've got a foamy foam. Let me see if I can find my... It's not in there. So you know what? I'm just going to go free form. So what I'm typically I would put this on a handle. I think I've got most of my handles tucked away in little clasp bins, but I'm just going to do some little daubs there. Let's switch it up. Let's add some Arctic sky. And Let's do some limoncello. And I could either, like I can smooth some of this out like this, get you something really abstract there, or I can take my foam. This creates some texture. And then I'm just going to take a little, I've got some slushy straws here. Oh, I thought that was opened. Okay, hold tight. I can just sprinkle little bits of glitter and because this is wet, it's hopefully gonna hold. Now I would still, now I'm not gonna put it over. But now I can just kind of tap off the excess and now you've got this glittery textured. And that's holding really well. So I'm just gonna let that dry if you want more glitter or more of a, I'm going to say maybe less glitter, but more of a pearlescent, here is that mango tango just plain. Over here is where I have mixed it with the Sizzix pearlescent medium. And it does lighten the color a little bit, but it gives it that beautiful pearlescent shine. All right. So there's a lot, I mean, paint is amazing because you can just mix stuff with it. And you can, I think you can use texture paste with it. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, not that I've tried. Uh, I've seen lots of videos and because I'm just learning how to dabble in this as well, my invitation to all of you is to just grab something and play with it and see what happens. All right. 
One more thing I'm going to show you. So the one aspect of this that I didn't ever really consider is that because this paint was designed for crafting, it does have some degree of elasticity to it as well. So you can see it's not cracking when I'm bending the paper. It sticks to the paper. But what that also means is that you can put it through an embossing folder. So I've got... I've got this piece here that I did a little bit earlier and it does look like it's a still a little bit wet. So let me see if I can speed that process up a little bit. Does the color, sorry, Janice is asking, does the color change if you let it air dry versus if you used a heat tool? Um, not, to a, not to a very noticeable degree. Um, every color is going to lighten and soften a little bit as, you, um, as it dries, whether you heat set it or whether it dries on its own. Uh, but I haven't seen any noticeable difference whether I heat set it or whether um, whether I just let it air dry. Val is telling me to save my messy paper towels for Chris. I think she has enough of her own messy paper towels. Um, but you never know. Maybe if she's on here and she wants to comment, then I can fish those out for her. All right, so now this is relatively dry. Still a little bit warm. I'm gonna run it through an embossing folder. So what do I have in my bag of tricks here? I have, oh, I have this one. This one I believe is called Art Deco. Don't think it says on the actual folder. But here you see our nice flat, or relatively flat piece. I'm going to just squish it in my sandwich here off camera because that's all I have room for. I'm going to put it through my machine here. So my one area of paint was still a little bit wet, but look at all that detail. It comes right through. So I can just crop that and I'm sure that I just can apply a little bit of water to this and clean that up. Yeah, it's coming off. What I'll do is I'll throw it in my little wet tray and let it soak while we are crafting. But isn't that cool? I mean, it never occurred to me that you could um, also put that through um, an embossing folder and have it still withstand without cracking or um, making a real mess of things. Um, let's see if I have another one. Maybe this one's pretty dry. Let's try that again. This time I'm going to use my shells and Let's do that. This is one of my favorite embossing folders. Wow, look at that. Look how cool that is. Almost looks like fire or a beach blanket or something like that. Super fun. So just make sure that your, your panels are dry. That's really the only key. And uh, so maybe a little bit of prep or do a whole bunch of panels, go have a snack, come back and you are all set to go. So how do we take these abstract pieces and turn them into cards or layout elements or, um, Traveler's notebook pages, that kind of thing. Now I thought I had, yep, I do over on this side, some card bases. 
I just got some mini slim lines here. So I am actually going to play with this one. I am going to play with this one. And you know what? Maybe I'm gonna make up a couple more to dry while we're playing with these. And all right. Some hibiscus and mango tango, my two favorites. and scoop this time i'm just using that spatula oh and it's still got a little bit of that blue on there that's okay scoop up some mango tango and it's just kind of fun and random and maybe let's pounce a little bit and i gotta tell you it looks like someone was in kindergarten making this, but wait till you see when it's done. Oh, I know what else I can use. I'm gonna use my um, stenciled one, cause that was awesome. I still see, and you can tell when it is still wet because it's shiny. As it dries, and maybe this is a slightly different answer to, my, to your question, uh, Janice, um, it does go a little bit more matte. So the shininess does tend to fade. The color doesn't fade, but the shininess fades to more of a matte finish. So that way you can know it's dry or not. Let me just dry these up. And I mean, this one here with the stencil, I could just use it as a card base on its own. And maybe that's what I'll do. Okay. All right. So let's put that off to the side and let's come back to this. Val wants you to try the rose gold. Val wants me to try the rose gold. I did not see that comment. All right, Val. Um, okay, let's try the rose gold while we let this dry. I think I had one more. Did I? Oh. And that's the problem when you don't have a lot of space is that stuff's going to get blooped on. Hmm. Okay. Let's add some rose gold to this guy. Maybe on the black. Okay. So, oh, having trouble with my, whoops. All right, there's the rose gold. Be careful it doesn't bloop out at you. Okay, so we've got this guy here. But we're gonna add some some streaks of rose gold to this. Just putting all my tools away that I can. Actually, yeah. Let's just. I've got just a palette, another palette knife here, and then just adding in some abstract hits to it. Isn't that pretty? Oh, to me, that's more of a copper than it is a rose gold. Um, let's do a little bit more. This time, I'm just going to kind of pounce it. Really, and I mean, I'm, I guarantee you, Chris will concur. Anything goes. There is no right or wrong way. Um, I'm going to try one other thing. 
And I think this one, so I'm gonna set this aside to dry. It does have some thick areas, so we might not be able to come back to it. Uh, yes, this would look gorgeous as if it was embossed, um, especially if you were layering it with some other colors as well. Uh, let me come back to this one and my white. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white And I'm gonna spray a little bit of water on it just to water it down a little bit. Get my, I've just got another paintbrush. I'm gonna mix it in like that. And then I think I need a little bit more water. Just trying to do that flicking technique, which I'm really not very practiced at. Oh, there we go. There's a big splot, not where I wanted it. So you can play with that splatter technique as well. All right, so all kinds of techniques there. Uh, that you can use this amazing paint for. Let me soak those. Let me wipe this baby down. And see, I have gone out of my comfort zone. I'm getting messy. Yep, that looks like fireworks, absolutely. And we've just had a very fireworky um, set of holidays. So that was always fun. It'd be great to, you know, to do, um, you know, some accents for your page that look like that. Or even if you cut out letters, you could do that same kind of thing. All right, I'm going to start with this guy. I am going to trim the paper down a little bit. So... That we've just got something a little bit more manageable to work with. I don't mind leaving a little bit of white there, but I'm going to trim this piece off the top. And grab my card base. So now I've got this finished piece and I'm going to put it just kind of here. Yeah, no, here. And then again, maybe this is where no, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's see if this works. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that rose gold on my finger and just bring up that texture. So that's kind of fun. You don't want too much because you just wanna kind of kiss that pattern open or you're gonna do stuff like that, like I just did and get it where I don't want it but then I'm gonna just have some fun and I'm gonna, here, let's do this. Let's make it look like it was on purpose. And then I'm going to dig into my bag of goodies here. I have some pink fresh sentiments that are already foiled and I know this is rose gold and this is regular gold and silver. So maybe silver will work a little bit better. What have I got here? That's a little bit big. Whoops, don't fall off. Here we go. Good luck with your new adventure. So just a few pop dots.
and I just put a couple on just for the sake of time but that can just nestle in here I don't know that's kind of fun I'm not sure I'm in love with this I wish this piece were a little bit bigger and I make more of an impact with it but that's all part of playing uh, what do I have next next I have next I have this one but I don't feel like it is big enough so is this piece dry almost or maybe maybe I'll just go oh I know what I could do I can that's still a little wet this piece is pretty dry other than maybe this little corner over here I have a butterfly die. So what if I Well, maybe not this one. Oh, here's an idea. I've got my little switchlet here. So I'm going to die cut a leaf. this in here so that I can die cut that So here now I have a striped leaf that I can put on no I think I'm just gonna do a nice simple black background so you don't have to even use it as your base you can just use it to die cut I'm a little short, but that's okay. So let's just put this on. Now let's do, I'm going to switch this and go landscape. And then this little guy can just go on here. And I got my fingers crossed for you. So maybe this is another good luck card. some of that color I don't know I'm just playing just kind of gives it that fiery exit or if you don't like it you can always just make it a shorter card and then one last card I will quickly do because I am way past my time is this beautiful guy and we'll trim him down again as well this still feels a little bit wet to me. Let's just pretend that it's on an A2 card base. So I like it like it is. I don't really want to trim it down, but I can simply add a sentiment to it. So way lots of fun with paint lots of creaminess you can emboss it 
You can paint with it with a brush. You can use a spatula. You can use a texture tool. You can use your connected fingertips because um, you never lose these guys. And you can add glitter. You can do all kinds of stuff. I hope that it was a lot of fun for you. I know I had lots of fun, but I'm looking around at this mess and we will definitely have to clean that up. Definitely out of my comfort zone. Um, please keep joining us on Tuesday nights in July as we each get outside of our comfort zone and try some different things. And uh, if you have any questions, as always, you know where to find us. Uh, papercraftersworkshop.ca is the website. Uh, customer service at craftersworkshop.ca is our email. Or just post a comment here and we will get back to you. So thanks so much, everyone. Again, I apologize for being late. I apologize for going over time. And I encourage you to get out your paints or something that you're just not sure about and get outside your comfort zone as well. Have a great night.